What's up, bro? What up, bro? And welcome to Bra Meets World. What is Bra Meets World? Your boy Meets World Fancast. Welcome to episode 54. I'm CJ. Not PC! <laughs> <laughs> that was different. I'll give you that. How have you been, sir? You know what? I've been great. You know, we're wrapping up summer. I really feel like I took advantage of the season. I got outdoors, I got to travel. And, um, you know, it's officially Halloween in my life. Right <laughs> that so, is true. Uh, I will ha- you will be happy to know that boyfriend and I, uh, we picked our Halloween costumes. Oh, are you saving it as a surprise? I, I will you tell, tell you. I'm not going to say it on the air. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I think, I think you'll be happy with them. You, damn it. I've been, I've been looking for costume ideas for a while. <laughs> the problem is, is that I don't like to go to, like, those halloween stores uh-huh. to buy a costume i get uh-huh. i like uh like looking online for like specialty shit i i pinterest for diy i just want something uh-huh. a little bit more unique so i'm not gonna lie oh god all right so i scrap everything i just said i'll just tell you because uh, <laughs> it'll have time later and if i don't do it well i didn't do it so you knew my intent <laughs> but so we of course there's all these couple costumes and trying to do things like that and he was like well how about apollo and rocky Oh. And I was like, I love that. And but I was like really self conscious about like being Apollo, like you know, just like chest open or whatever. So I was like, what if you're Rocky Balboa and I'm Bullwinkle? So we're Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> just brilliant. <laughs> I think we're just gonna do Rocky and uh, Apollo. But I want it credit for my mm. genius. I. <laughs> Damn it, that's a that's a great idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, that was the as you, We're gonna as have you to think. talk to Rex and convince him about this. That is just amazing. Yeah, okay. Um yeah, so you say you're still looking. You you're still you guys are still looking into what your costume is. Yes, are yes. We we we're not locked down on anything yet. Um, but it's still early, so okay. we have to well, you know, as you said, it's you do and you don't because Halloween is one of the very few holidays California will celebrate, so you kind of want to bring it, you know? I, my A game. Yeah, absolutely. And then also, like, we're, we're getting off topic. <laughs> you guys came here for an episode, <laughs> and this week's episode is Rave On. Can I just say something? Yes. <laughs> just first impressions out the gate. Yes. This is one of those episodes that I remember watching so vividly from the original broadcast of the show. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, whatever age I was when this first aired, I was very aware of the storyline. Really? I was very aware of the characters, and I was very aware that I was watching something that an older generation would appreciate in this episode specifically, even if I didn't know exactly what it was. Got it. Got it. So. All right. Well, cool. Um, so should I just do the tell me about it? Tell me about it. This is Season 3, Episode 8, Rave On. Yay, yay. Corey and Eric decide to throw a rave, but they pick the worst possible date to have a party. The same day as their parents' 20th wedding anniversary. Guest stars, the monkeys! <sighs> you know what's so great about this uh, monkeys reunion is that it's kind of a slow burn. Because as we've seen, they've had, you, you know, uh, the... Topanga's father on the show before. Jedediah, who was played by Peter Tork, and he has been. Yes. Uh, And it's actually really funny. It seems like they were building up to this. Yes. Because after this, Jedediah is played by two different people. Exactly. (laughs) They're like, we did what we needed to do. (laughs) This this is almost like the Avengers of the Boy Meets World, where the characters we picked up on, (laughs) Gordy comes back. Gordy is played by Mickey Dolenz. Mickey Dolenz, who is amazing. He actually does really well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, I, he's, I think he's a great actor. Um, he was played, he played uh, Alan's friend in a few episodes. Yeah, he's, Gordon's season. been around for a while. Yeah. And then we get Davy Jones as Reginald. And I have... Reginald! Reginald Fairchild! <laughs> I have so, I have issues with this because it seems, it seems so weird that like, A, the way that they set Reginald up, the way that they kind of make fun of his accent. It's so weird. You and know I'm what? Just like, I don't get it. I, I, I agree with you, but I also 
completely disagree. I think he was charming <laughs> as fuck, and he played it off wonderfully. Davy Jones plays... I'm saying Davy Jones plays the character believably. I have a problem with everything around Reginald's character. Like, the idea that he is this... The families... Or, sorry, not even the families... Alan and Amy's friend from college, when Alan went backpacking across Europe, it's weird. That makes no sense. Like it's even a- even if like let's assume that that was a real thing, you don't just knock on someone's door and expect a black families would be like, uh, what hotel are you staying at? <laughs> if, if we really want to get down to the nitty gritty of this, yes. this is some this is the creepiest and the most terrifying thing that's ever happened in the history of Boy Meets World. <laughs> so I want you to think about this: when they were backpacking, clearly they weren't living in the house that they're living Absolutely. in now. Absolutely, there is no internet. There's no Facebook. So how? Did he Did track he them down? Find them. Alan Matthews is all you have. <laughs> the most, the blandest, whitest name you could possibly look up. There, there's so many things that are happening, like you said, with his character that we're glossing over because the charm of Davy Jones. Davy Jones us is charming, yes. but the entire time I kept thinking, why is no one freaked out about this man? Yes. <laughs> they just all. And by the way. It's everyone. Everyone seems to be like, oh, no, it's fine. As if Americans are so good with strangers, especially yeah. foreign ones. <laughs> um, I also think it's interesting how basically no one wanted to hurt the nice white man's feelings. So that's why he was able to do some. Again, <laughs> don't get me started. Do not get me started. Uh, but yeah, so those are the monkeys. Um, and then we also, in our roll call, have uh, Veronica de la Cruz, who plays Marissa. Marissa is the cousin that Eric is. Oh, I thought it was Wanda. Oh, it was Wanda. Well, then it was Marissa. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, apologies, because I looked it up and it, I had Marissa, but you're right. It's Wanda. 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 Uh, that was also weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's very weird that neither uh, Wanda or Eric ever met each other, uh, yet she knowingly was invited to her. Exactly. This is this is very weird. Yeah. Like, honestly, this whole thing is weird. This was a very weird episode for me. You talked about first impressions, you remembering everything. I looked at this episode like, what am I watching? This feels like one of those episodes that, as we've spoken about, they've had in mind for a while now. Uh-huh. They were working towards it. And it just seemed like they made up a reason. Because even the issues and the troubles, I'm like, none of this has to be the way that it is. Like, this felt very... Happy Days sitcom. You know what? You're a hundred percent right. <laughs> and but you're I'm like, so, I don't care. I, I don't loved it. care. I loved it. <laughs> no, okay, there are some major holes I had and some major problems I had. Mm-hmm. Um, one was the fact that this illegal rave. It's literally first of all, it's, it's says, marketed a, as an illegal rave. A legal rave on Friday. First of all. <laughs> Come on, I was guys. like, why would you even? But then they were like, Eric's behind it. I was like, okay, now it makes sense. Because honestly, I was like, who who advertised a legal rave on Friday? It was just the, the, the lamest way to give exposition that Absolutely. Eric was promoting this. Just Absolutely. whispers or something would have yeah. been fine. Um, I also uh, fucking love that they keep stressing that it's an illegal rave. What's illegal about the party that we saw happen at Chubby's? No, well, first of all, it happens without Chubby's consent, but also, they didn't know that until four days before. Exactly. Because they didn't have a location. And I was like, again, very believable that Eric would plan up a legal rave that's supposed to be his big shindig and not even have a location yet. This, uh, there was so much of this that felt like a season two episode. Like, I will give you that as far as, like, Eric uh, kind of stealing the boys' narrative of wanting to do something to be remembered, wanting to do something that would make him stand out in high school. Um, but it felt, but like that's always been Corey's motivation. It did. It felt odd that it was Eric's, but I all guess... of a sudden, because we've seen Eric struggle with school, we've seen Eric be focused on girls. If they even said that Eric wanted to do this to get as many girls as he could, which is kind of like the motivation for later on in the episode, I'd be like, fine. But the fact that you're like, Eric's like, look, I'm graduating soon, maybe, and I want to leave my mark with this illegal party, that just sounds very Corey-esque. I just also don't understand why Eric had to have it on that specific day. Yes! Because, let me just say something, what are we, eight episodes in? (laughs) This is, what, October, November, like... 
this isn't like the school year is about to wrap up. There's no like ticking time bomb for Eric with this party. On top of that, we already made it clear that they had no location when he thought about yeah. it. Yeah. So that means no one knew where they were going. They were all going to wait. So if you pushed it to Saturday morning, no one would have known. Or like most raves, after midnight, meaning your parents' party is over. Because Amy and Alan ain't staying up to midnight. Hell no. <laughs> That's the thing. They were like, oh, we didn't think, oh, let's just have one party before one after. They're like, no, we're just going to mix it up and see what happens. Uh, guys, guys, <laughs> the only thing that would make this an illegal rave is drugs. Can we please talk about that? <laughs> like, they're promoting drugs theoretically with this this illegal well rape. honestly i feel like this is at the time where rave culture was big and you're right like ecstasy and all this like the the atmosphere that is rave culture is really um in the zeitgeist at this point in time and I get that, but you're right. This nothing we see about this is a rave. There is no. When I think of raves, I think of obviously DJ uh, ecstasy, DJ neon. Yep. I think of bright uh, colors. I think of odd outfits. Everyone here looked like they just came from school because they did. Yeah, no one is just. <laughs> it's like school kids and a bunch of old people. And the other thing about this fucking, cool, <laughs> why didn't they just say? Hey, mom and dad, we invited our friends to your party. Yes, again, as I said, the, everything about this episode to me felt off. And it felt off in the way because it's like, I don't feel like you guys thought about anything. Like, make it to where Eric already had the location. Eric already paid for everything. Eric already has a band and, like, everyone coming. And so the fact that he forgot means he has to make this work. And that alone would be like, okay, we have to go on this ride. Or to even make this more <laughs> true to Eric's spirit, why not have it be that he's trying to... There's a girl who said, okay, I'll see you Friday. And then when he, he starts to feel pressure about it, he tries to change the date and she like gives him some feedback that's like, all right, no, I'm going to keep it. I'm, I'm keep leaving it. tomorrow. I'm Something. leaving Saturday morning. Something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have Reginald have a daughter. I mean, like, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many ways they can make this work and make it believable, and I just feel like they didn't even try. And they also do this thing with Corey, which is, again, very, we call it TGIF, it's very ABC Family, where Corey is stressed out so much, so anxious, over things that, honestly, there's no reason. Yes. There's no reason for Corey to be on a 10, for because none of these are real problems. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... <laughs> I, I, the stakes seem so much higher, but you're right. As we're talking about it, I'm like, he could have just arranged the dinner at a different location. Like, why didn't he just tell them it wasn't Chubby's yeah. and just figure something else out at somewhere else? Yeah. Him and Eric could have went there. And then, uh, there's like, so many honestly, ways. Yes, let's do the whole two um, dates to the prom situation. Yeah. Where chubby's has the rave and then across the street there's another party and they just go back and forth and then eventually get they get caught you could have the same episode <laughs> and have it make so much more sense doing it that way absolutely again every what i'm saying is these this plot the way that they have it structured doesn't make sense um the only thing that kind of fits is how the monkeys you know get on stage you know sure, like sure. they they do have all the pieces fall reginald came out of nowhere he's a sudden guest um well jebediah has been known to be making instruments We've exactly seen that we in see him day. making the well we see him making the guitar sure early on in the episode mickey dolan's uh was in the band with alan in that first season where they did that yeah. reunion with his college buddies so like all of this is kind of making sense narratively also um with everything we just said why isn't Alan playing? Yeah. <laughs> we just said the entire time that this guitar was for Alan. Yeah. Why would Amy not be like, oh, here's your guitar, and oh. Alan at least strum it once, or be the one to be like, hey, why don't you guys play? Uh, I, I think that's because uh, Jebediah did not finish said guitar. <laughs> that is also true. Um, uh, 
I, you're 100% right about all of this. There's one issue I have, which is I don't give a damn about any of it. I am still such a massive fan <laughs> of this episode. And I think it's because I kind of love the monkeys. Well, again, I grew up watching the monkeys. Yeah, and they were I, TV land for yeah, us. Yeah, they were TV land. Well, actually, do you remember PAX? Yes. All right. So yeah, <laughs> I used to watch them on PAX TV. And so that and Gomer Pyle. So... I, I like the show, and I even got the Partridge Family reference later on. Like, all of this I'm in favor of. The only thing that doesn't make sense to me is the way that they brought it all together. Honestly, it all seemed hokey. Like, you, or you could have just been like, hey, all of Alan's friends want to dedicate a song to them. You know, it's just like... Yeah. There was no reason to do this roundabout thing with Eric and the party and Corey being stressed and... Or just have this thing of just like, um, what was their favorite song? Oh, My Girl. Oh, I know all of the instrumentation. I just don't know the lyrics. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, all right. So I know that you love this episode, but I do want to get into something really quick, which is the idea of, I think it's called American exceptionalism is really shown in this episode to me. Because one, there's a lot of things... Like, for example, they keep making fun of Jedediah's name as if it's the most absurd name they've ever heard in their entire life. Sure. sure Jedediah sure. is a known American name. Yeah. Like, it's well known. But they keep talking about it like it's from another world. And it's just because it's not average and it's not the typical American. It's not Tyler. And because it's not Tyler or Josh, Jedediah is made to seem weird or off kilter. Then you have Reginald who this entire time, we see him in yacht clothes. We see him, like, with, like, this posh British accent the entire time. And yet, he's a couch surfer? It's just, it doesn't make sense. It just seems like Americans are making fun of anything that's not mainstream. And the joke is, isn't this person weird for being a person that does not fit into Cookie Cutter America? Uh, I think that a little bit. Um, I, I think for the names, personally, as just, like, uh, <laughs> I think it was more like, oh, these names will be funny for these characters to say. Reginald, Jebediah, they're just, they're just to have a little bit more like, oh, those names are rememberable, and it's... I'm not disagreeing. Again, my, my whole argument is the attitude around this the like here's the thing if his name was reginald and it was just funny or if they just liked saying jedediah like there are plenty of times there's plenty of shows where people are like you know what? i just like saying your name it's fun it's different Th completely fine because what you're saying is you are unique and you have a unique personality and i think that that's worth celebrating to me this episode isn't celebrating anything about Reginald. It's not celebrating anything about Jedediah. Well, you know what? I will <laughs> say, uh, with Jedediah, I think you're absolutely right about them just kind of, like, treating him like a granola person. Um, but Reginald is just fully annoying from the uh, moment we see him to absolutely. the moment he leaves. I don't feel like they paint him in any way other than how he's supposed to be painted, which is just a pain in their ass. But Reginald is apparently a doctor, or professor of some kind. So he has a substantial job. He is... I'm. You're right. I am fascinated by Reginald. What is his life like? This let's is what follow, I'm saying. Let's follow <laughs> him for an episode as he goes from home to home. <laughs> and we figure out through flashbacks how he drastically lost his family. And now he's on the hunt for the feeling of family. He is Sean off the rails. At, uh, here's the thing. If we would have done, made that comparison, I would have loved this. Mm. I even feel like we handled Grandma better. Because Grandma made sense. She came in and she was like, hey, I'm wild. I'm going to be chaotic. And the whole episode was about how she disrupts Alan's life and what that does for Alan. Reginald just came in here to be annoying and hang around until they got him to perform. And... There's no real reason for him to be set up as annoying. The way that they call him out is that he's always there, but also they set him up to be this British invasion type person. I will, I will say that you're right. Like, narratively, he's only there so he could end up performing. What I would have liked with him, um, because this is supposed to be Alan and Amy's anniversary, yeah. it would have, why not, like, 
why not like Reginald come in and he have all these pictures of them on this trip and it remind them of falling in love and we hear, get to hear their backstory of how they met somehow or like tie it together in a way or that... Or have it be one of those things where Alan invited him because yeah. he's like, hey, do you remember? I honestly thought this was going to be one of those things where Alan invited him for Amy and Amy's like, oh, this is an ex-boyfriend. You know, like I, honestly, that's what I thought initially because when she sees him, she's like, oh, my God. And he's, like, so happy to see her. She's clearly uncomfortable. But then she goes, who are you? And I'm like, oh, that makes things weirder. Yeah. But, like, when Alan came down and was like, who are you? I was like, okay, now this doesn't make sense. Because had you just made it to where this guy from your past who showed up during your anniversary weekend was brought by one of you to be like, hey, do you remember that we had a good time with him? And then later on you were like, oh, now I remember all the other things about him. Because we've all done that, where we're like, hey, I really miss that friend of mine who I met at camp. And then he shows up, and you're like, that's right, you're a dick. <laughs> it would have been interesting if, like, we didn't see Alan's present to Amy, and Reginald was somehow supposed to be there specifically to distract her enough for him to, like, give her some kind of, like, awesome Exactly, this something. is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, everything, that that's what I'm wanting for and i just feel like we want it more or at least i want it more from the reginald storyline than we got let me ask you this yes uh did you laugh at all in this episode i laughed a few times i did not laugh like i usually would um at a boy meets world i just honestly i don't feel like everything was funny one of the funniest parts to me was when turner goes um hey uh matthews what does he say? Like, homeroom tomorrow, $10? <laughs> $10 cover charge or something like that? Like, I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, and yeah, a lot of, like, the interactions with the teachers were funnier to me. Sure. But Eric freaking out, the whole Matthews Brothers thing, Yeah. I didn't I, get anything. Yeah, I, I could have done without that, too. I wasn't really into it. Um, I did, like, one of my favorite things about this episode is that uh, scene where um frankie gives amy a watch and she goes oh this is my watch and he goes yeah that's how i do you'd like it yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> again these things are funny and we're also doing this thing where we get either frankie or joey now yes which yeah. i find very interesting because i mean i think it's great because we've always seen them as a pair and ever since they had that like breakup with Everyone yeah. else, we get one at a time. Um, Do you it, know it, if we get the both of them again? You know, I don't. But I was going to say, it would have made this rave more realistic if Joey and Frankie were the ones doing it. Yes. And they had something over Eric that, like, hey, you have to do this. Yeah. Absolutely. Just because it has a very mob, like, oh, we're going to throw this party to make money kind Absolutely. of Absolutely. Uh, also, there's, I was like, another issue I had with the rave specifically was that they just put a canceled over the illegal rave yep, poster yep. when you could take the poster down. Just any normal person. I thought the same thing. <laughs> they would just take the poster down. Um, I fucking love their performance of My Girl. I know it's cheesy, uh, but... Really? Like, when they start... As a fan... A David Ruffin. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, this, I'm not looking at it as like a Temptations thing. I feel like my girl is like an American classic. Uh, yeah, because Temptations forever. I know. Well, obviously, <laughs> all right, obviously. All right. Ain't nobody come to see you, Otis. <laughs> um, no, but I just thought that uh, when they start playing it and Amy and Alan kind of have that moment of like, oh, they, they're they playing our first song. I, I, I don't know, man. I was into it. The nostalgia of this episode, I'm... Of the generation where I can appreciate the nostalgia of my parents' generation. And I, I feel like had I been born a few years later, I would completely miss out on this Partridge Family Monkeys thing. But I have some knowledge of it to the point where I can see, like, when, I watch, when I watch Girl Meets World and I see them bring characters from Boy Meets World, I'm like, oh, I see what they're doing here. And this is the same ideas I had watching this episode. Absolutely. Well, I think my issue is that I get very nostalgic when they bring older characters or old TV stars onto stuff like this each and every time. You saw how we were with Phyllis Diller was on that episode. I think we talked about it for like ever because we just were in love with this character we brought. But it was a character that made sense. It was a character that was funny and the story structure around her was weird, but the entire episode was weird, so it's fine. This episode just feels slapped together, 
And I guess my disservice is not with the monkeys, not with really any of the actors or the premise in total. It's how we get here. Yeah. That is my problem. I feel like you could have taken five seconds to make an actual script instead of just being like, ah, oh, we'll make it work. <laughs> Um, I 100% agree, and I'm realizing as you're talking that I'm kind of a monkey stand because I still <laughs> don't give a shit. I'm still loving this episode. Bigger than the Beatles. The, it, you know what? One day. <laughs> <laughs> One day soon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, anything else that you really, like, really stood out for you? Oh, one thing I did like is Topanga in this episode. Um, just because it's, we're starting to get the intensity of Topanga. Yes. You know, like, we got it, I think, last episode with her and the newscasting. But usually, Topanga's so, like, passive and so yeah. there to be, like, the straight man with the boys. So to see her, like, really give it to Frankie and then her dad being like, uh, what is it? Tippy! Which yeah, I love. Tippy, yeah. He's like, Tippy, did you have meat today? She's like, no, all this happened. Man, I may have had a meatball. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, um, I love that for a bunch of reasons, because you're right. Like, we're seeing her develop a personality, this this personality of the uh, of the overachiever, which yes. will become such a, a huge part of her character. Such a huge part. Um, and we're just getting the, the, the start of that now. Um, but I also love just this merger of the Topanga where she's turning into and the Topanga we knew. Yes. With her dad coming in and reminding us that she doesn't really eat meat and that yeah. she's part of this world where Jebediah's life makes sense. Yeah. And so um, I just thought that was a cool reminder of just where we are at with Topanga's evolution. Which is why I like that scene, because you're right. Like, even him calling her Tippy, it's like, oh, that's right. This is her family. Like, yeah. it's just, it's a little nod that Topanga has a life away from these boys and she's as you said a full fledged character. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um honestly, I don't have much else. Do you have a bra moment? I have nothing. I <laughs> have a bra moment. What's your bra I've moment? I've been waiting to talk about. <laughs> um Siege, I, I here's a question for you, okay? Yes. Um how open are you with your parents about like sexuality? Um, they know about my sexuality. No, I, I just mean, like, if you're, like, walking down the street or something like that and you see a, a person you find attractive, would you say it to your parents? Not to my parents, per se. Okay, Why? so, even more so, if you see a picture of someone that you find attractive Ugh. and the only people around you are your parents and a stranger, would you, as a teenager, even say that out loud? So, as a teenager, no. I will say, as an adult, there are plenty of times where, like, a commercial or something going on, I'm like, ooh, they could get it. But, like, very playfully. I, like, I don't know. For me, it's also really weird that they kept going to, like, what's clearly old photos. And, like, it's just, it's, a, yeah, that was kind of weird. And so, the fact that they threw in that Corey made that comment, which his character would never do. Yes. With Eric, it makes more sense. There aren't parents around. It's just him and Corey. That makes sense. But for Corey to be like, who's that hot chick in the white tank top? As if he's checking out those mama titties. <laughs> they were both turned on by Amy. Ew. Ew. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. It just felt like a weird, like, like Marty McFly kissing his mom kind of it moment. Def Thank you. That's what it feels like. It feels like Marty McFly and his mom. And you're like, why did we have to do this? Are you guys just trying to tell us that Amy used to be hot? You could just have... Every other person who's not her son say that. Have Reginald say that. Yes. <laughs> Again, I, I, what I wanted from this episode, what I would have loved from this episode, is for Reginald and Amy to have a past mm -hmm. that Alan didn't know about, and they have to get over that. And then, you know, like, give us a storyline with the parents that makes sense, that show us that parents are flawed, or how um, parents' relationships no, no, are just... There's... there's so many ways to fix the premise of this. But the point is, is that, gosh, it's rememberable, if nothing else. No, I will say, I did, re like, the moment it started, with the party and everything else, again, I love, I will say, I love Frankie's. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole, Everything that Frankie does, I think, is pretty good. And he does a lot with what his... You're not on the list, Grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's not Grandma, that's Aunt Liz. Yeah. All right, you know, it's just like, and he switches over to Aunt Liz, and if anyone who's not on the list, that whole... Uh, trope of forget everything I told you. Okay, that means everyone can. Which, by the way, I was like, 
How mad would you be yep. if you paid ten dollar cover to get into this place, and then everyone else who came after yep. you got in for free? Oh, I'm burning this place down. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just real fast before we wrap up, um, Sean Witness cheerleaders chocolate wrestling <laughs> and asked for a giant spoon of whipped cream to uh, assist them. Uh, <laughs> thoughts? Um, my main thought is where did they get this chocolate? Because this is Chubby's, and I have a feeling. He's going to be short on inventory. And yeah, that's that's my My feeling is that (laughs) Sean is witnessing cheerleaders chocolate wrestling. He's not leaving to walk around and casually tell people about it. Well, I believe he would come get Corey. Topanga is there. (laughs) I I will say, do you think that (laughs) Sean Uh, cares? You're right. Probably not. All right, I, I honestly, I'm sorry, you guys. I just didn't have much else to say. No, you're right. There you're wasn't right. even like I thought of like uh, Fanny told me. There's no lesson in this. Um, the monkeys are a band that you should know. The about. The lesson <laughs> is is that it's more important to do something genuine and thoughtful for your parents than something not genuine and over the top. Which is parents. very true. But and I'm glad you said that because I looked over it because it's like that's so obvious. Like when Alan and Amy's like, you could have got us a card. Yeah. It's like yeah, you could have gotten them a card. You know what? I know that seems very obvious, but I do think that kids are so like wrapped up in their own problems that they really don't think about their parents parents' birthdays and anniversaries the way that you would as an adult. But it maybe. didn't fixate on that. I mean, uh, like, it kind of skims it over, but it doesn't make it a point the way that Boy Meets World does, usually. Because we need episode time for not one, but two performances by the monkeys. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Uh, what grade are you giving this? I'm giving this episode a B plus, and I stand by serious? it firmly. Yep. Uh, God, this episode is a C and I'm being grateful because I would give it a C minus, but you've convinced me of some of the highlights. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a great episode. Okay, um, homework. Uh, yeah, for homework, um, uh, you know, guys, mm, I don't know that I have anything. You are the worst. <laughs> I literally go homework. You're like, yeah. No, I don't got that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I. It's a conversation for later. Okay. Uh, that was very helpful to our listeners. I did have homework. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is, I don't know if you've seen it, but the movie Ready or Not. Have I you seen it yet? Seen oh it. my God. So Ready or Not is this kind of hard comedy thing. Um, it's set around games and, sorry, the, the premise is this girl is marrying into like a, what would be the has Oh, the family. horror movie. Yeah. Oh. We're seeing that. Oh, are you? No spoilers. Oh, okay. Right. So I wasn't going to spoil okay, it okay, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but I was going to say, I had fun. Oh, and yeah. a lot of my friends have said it's one of their more enjoyable movies of oh, the summer. Oh, that's awesome. And, so, like, take it for what it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be, you know, the next Scream or, like, anything like this. But it's a fun movie. And I enjoyed myself. And yeah. I thought that everyone, specifically with our Halloween conversation earlier, I thought this would be a really fun uh, homework assignment. Yeah, Bloomhouse uh, does a lot of interesting... Bloomhouse does... I honestly feel like Bloomhouse, it does what we need the movie industry to do right now. Yeah. Which they're the ones taking chances. A lot of the time, they're like doing original content. Yeah, 100%. Horror movies are where original content is coming from yeah. lately. And that and Netflix. So... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so that is the homework. Uh, TC didn't give you guys anything, so... Oh, no, 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 I did. Uh, while you were talking, I thought about something. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, righteous... Uh, the Righteous Gemstones on HBO. Really? Um, I want to uh, throw that out there. Um, because I uh, drank the Kool Aid of religion for several of years in my did. youth, and um, was managed to escape as the victor. However, <laughs> watching this show about a mega church uh-huh. and the people who run it, uh-huh. I have such a crazy connection to. And I watched the show, and I'm like, I know every single person in this cast. Okay, in my actual life, you've intrigued me because you know I grew up in the church too. Yeah, so. I was like, do I even want to? But have you heard of How to Become a God in Central Florida? No. That is That stars Kirsten Dunst, and it's kind of the same premise, but it's set in Kissimmee. Wow. Okay. So, hometown. Yeah, which is our hometown. So I just think that um, maybe it went from 
one homework assignment to three. But oh, either way, uh, check those out and let us know what you think. Do your homework, bitch. All right, thank you guys for listening to Brown Beats World. Remember, you can find us on all the places, Spotify, iTunes. Well, iTunes is now becoming... Like, they're getting rid of iTunes. It's just Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Uh, Stitcher, all the places. Leave us a rating. Uh, give us your feedback at Brum Meets World or email us at BrumMeetsWorld at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at Extra Siege. That's X-T-R-A-C-E-E-J. Uh, Tonothy. Yes, you can find me at a brave verb me at that brave me on Instagram. Um, and you can also just find me like, you know, watching our homework assignments because I want to participate in homework as well. <laughs> okay, you guys, remember to dream, try, and do some damn good, y'all. Later, bros. Later. <laughs>